Well, yeah, and it's a meditation, you're not trying to do anything. It's more like you're relaxing and allowing yourself to notice that you are aware. And because you are aware, you don't have to try to be aware. It's always the case. So we, d we ignore awareness, that's called ignorance. Right? And that's one of the reasons why life is the way it is for most human beings is that uh, they're actively not paying attention to the truth. They're actively not paying attention to awareness itself, which is always available, is always there. And so when you practice meditation, you're not doing anything, you're simply being there. And if you're simply being there, then you're being aware because awareness is already the case. So you're just being there. Now that's, I mean, one of the reasons the practice is a practice and, and it takes some time for that to happen is first you have to fail. So that's one of the things to understand about practicing meditation is first you have to fail because the idea of being aware and uh, not doing anything is uh, a puzzle for most people. You know, because if, if I say to you, okay, when you practice meditation, just simply practice relaxing and being aware, the first thing that almost everybody will say is, well, how do I do that? Because we're doers. You want to know how you do everything, right? And you can't do that. It's already the case. It's just like he says at the end of the guided meditation, become the Buddha that you are. Well, that's an interesting statement, right? Become the Buddha that you are. And the reason he's saying that is because that's the way people look at everything. I'm not that, so I have to become that. Become the Buddha that you are. But if you are that, see now, if you look at it, I'm not that, but I have to come become that. But if you already are that, then why do you have to become that? The reason you have to become that is because you don't think you are that. So you have to stop thinking that you're not that, which is how you become that. <laughs> right? You have to stop thinking that you're not that, and that's how you become that. You have to start noticing that awareness is always there. And how do you do that? By stop not paying attention to it. Does that make any sense? Yeah, because when you are meditating, when you are meditating, you take the position of being the witness. When you're meditating, you're, you're looking. You're looking, and when you practice looking, you're just looking. You're not doing, right? The looking I'm talking about is not a doing, it's a being. Because awareness sees. Does it not? Yeah. So awareness sees. So when you practice meditation, you're looking from seeing, which is awareness itself, and you then become a seer. They, that they actually call uh, sages seers, right? Why? because they're seeing, they're being aware, and because they're aware, they're seeing, and because they're seeing, they're conscious. Because they're seeing, they're seeing what's actually happening instead of living in thought. Start seeing what's actually happening instead of living in thought. Thinking is not seeing. That's worth, take, that's worth contemplating, right? Thinking is not seeing. Thinking is an interpretation. Thinking is the narrative. Thinking is the voice in your head talking about what's there. That's not seeing. Seeing is just seeing. It's not talking about what's there. It's just seeing. And you discover through practicing med meditation that you can see. Without having to think about it, you can see. In fact, you're doing that all the time. You're doing that right now. If that wasn't the case, you'd be freaked out right now. If it wasn't the case that your awareness is seeing what's so, you'd be freaked out right now because you, you wouldn't know what was going on. You wouldn't know where you were. You understand? You don't have to think about where you are right now, do you? 
Now, your awareness is aware, okay, this is a room, there's no fire here, it's safe, right? This is a room, this is a chair. Your awareness is aware of all that. You don't have to think all that, right? Your awareness is aware of what's going on all the time. You don't have to think all that, but you think you do. And so, because you think you do, because you have been, because most human beings have been conditioned to being a thinker, right? You're conditioned to being a thinker. What do you think about everything? Let me think about it, right? And so you try and live life by thinking about it, which is why we say that you're living in your head. Why do we say you're living in your head? Because in your head is the voice called thinking, and that's where you are. You're being in your head, and what do I mean by that? I mean, when I say you're being in your head, I mean who you think you are is a thought, right? Who you think you are is a thought, which means that who you consider yourself to be is in your head because it's a thought, and thoughts are in your head. So meditation is, is, a, is an opportunity to discover what's already true, which is that you are aware, and furthermore, to discover that awareness knows. Awareness knows. Awareness knows. And if you can, because you discover that, if you can be, allow that to become active, and, uh, if you can allow that to become the way you're being, being aware, right? Then you start to see the things that you have not seen. You start to see the things you have not seen. So if I say here, when I say here, that, that, you, that you are not thinking your thoughts, right? That's something that you can see for yourself by being aware, just noticing. Almost nobody notices it because nobody's looking. Everybody's living in an assumed world. You're living in an assumed world. There's, this, there's a, 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 a phrase that a philosopher used, it might have been Heidegger, and he called the tranquilized obviousness. That you think everybody's moving around in life like they, are, like they know what's going on. Like, you know, tranquilize, in other words, you, you, you know, you, 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 the people in your life that you're close to, you know them, don't you? They're, it's obvious that you know them, right? That's an illusion. You don't know them. You know who you think they are, right? That's what you know. You know who you think they are. But that's not who they are. That's a set of ideas you have about them that, that you then take to be true. Isn't that the case? It's ideas you have about them that you then take to be true and therefore you, you think you know them. That's called tranquilized obviousness. You don't know them. It's, it's, and it's the same thing for, for yourself. You think you know yourself. You think you know yourself because you have ideas about who you are that you think are true, right? But you don't know yourself. You can't know yourself. All you can know are the ideas that you have about yourself and a lot of those ideas that you have about yourself you got from other people telling you about yourself, right? Or you got from your own ideas that you concluded about yourself. And most of the ideas that people have about themselves are negative. It's interesting. Most of the ideas that people have about themselves are negative. And that's the self that they're afraid to allow people to see. Most of the ideas that people have about you uh, that, uh, that are outside of you are more positive than the ideas you have about yourself. That's why in group therapy, right, in group therapy, one of the ways that group therapy works to help people is that the, the person who is the focus at any particular time in the group, right, the person that's talking and the person, the person that's sharing about their experience, their problems, they discover from feedback from the group that the group doesn't see them the way they see themselves and that's a big relief. Most people see you in a more positive light than you do. That's a hell of a statement, isn't it? 
So that right there, that gives you a, a, a reason to meditate because if that's the case, then you damn sure would like to find out what the hell's going on that that's the way it is. What's going on that that's the way it is? And through meditation, by being still and being silent, you can begin to notice what's always there. You can begin to experience awareness of what's always there and therefore you begin to see things that you weren't seeing before. You begin to see, for example, that you don't know what you think you know. You begin to see that you don't know what you think you know. You begin to see that how what you're dealing with, you see, because when you meditate, you can use meditation to deal with the questions that almost nobody asks. You can use meditation to deal with the questions that almost nobody asks. And I mean, if you, if, you do, if you stop, if you stop and you just look, if you just stop and you consider, if you stop and you consider, what are your questions? Instead of assuming that you know what you think you know, and assuming that it is the way you think it is, which most people do, right? Most people assume they know what they think they know, and they assume they know how it is. Instead of that, those assumptions, if you just stop and recognize they are assumptions, then what are your questions? There is, see here's the thing, one of the things you discover through practicing meditation is that you're not who you think you are, you're, it's not the way you think it is. That's not the case. That's all made up. That's all, that's all put together. There are two things that can happen through the practice of meditation over time. One is that you notice, you realize, you see for yourself that this is how you turned out. You see, this is who you're being is how you turned out. It's what got put together over time, right? You were a kid, all these things happened to you, you learned all this stuff about who you are, about your body, about the world, about life. That's your conditioning. That's how, that's what had you turn out how you are. It, you, so your brain is conditioned, it has certain programs in it, has certain ideas in it and so forth, and that's, that's who you are. That's, that's, who you're, that's who you're being. You're being this person, you're being this program that's playing. It's just playing through you. And you consider it to be you. But you, but you, but you suffer because you notice you don't have much say-so about that thing that's playing through you that you call you. You suffer because you notice you don't have much say-so about it, right? That's the way you are, that's your personality, right? You do things that you, that ha that you do because of your habits, you do things that you do because of your fears. That's your personality, that's what got, to, to, uh, got put together, that's what plays. And so that causes your behavior, right? And you don't have any control over that. And so you start to feel uncomfortable because you have conflict, right? Things aren't going the way I want them to go. I can't control myself. I can't control my behavior. I can't control my habits. I can't control my mouth, right? And so you suffer because you're identified with that thing that got put together called a person, personality, right? But through meditation, you can discover that that's not what you are. That's just what, what got put together and because you, can, uh, you, because you discover that, you discover the possibility of not behaving as that. Uh, some of you in this class have reported that you have noticed your ability not to behave consistent with the thoughts that come into your head or the feelings you have, yes? yes right. Yeah, that means you're not behaving as that program, right? which means you must now be noticing the program and noticing that there's that it is not you if it was you you couldn't you couldn't behave differently right because it's you it must not be you if you can behave differently right if the thoughts that occur in your head are seen by you not to be your thoughts if the feelings that arise in you emotionally are recognized not to be your feelings that's just what's playing that's just the program that's running right and if you see that that's the case and you recognize that if you continue to let that run and you continue to let that determine who you're being and what you're saying and what you're doing, your life is going to continue to be the way it's been. Which for almost everybody is, is not very workable. Right? That continue to do the things that don't work. Continue to say the things that don't work. Continue to see things from a point of view that doesn't work. 
that causes you to be frustrated or angry or depressed or anxious or fe fearful. So you can discover that this program that got put together is not you, and because you discover that it's not you, you can start to have say-so about who you are. You can start to have say-so about who you are by paying attention to the program and, know, and knowing that it's a program and you don't have to let it, you don't have to identify with it, you don't have to be that. And then you can get creative, right? You can actually create behavior. Because if you're not that, then the question is, okay, then what are you? If you're not the personality, if you're not the program that is running in your brain, then what are you? So this is where, again, meditation comes in because what you are, if you sit there and pay attention and relax, it'll dawn on you at some point, if, if you just sit there and pay attention and relax, it'll dawn on you at some point that you're, you are aware. Or, or more accurately said that, that you are awareness. It'll just dawn on you that you are awareness. Now that, all, that opens up a possibility. Okay, if I am awareness and that awareness is unconditioned, then I can cause who I am being from that unconditioned awareness. In other words, I can be any way, I can be any possibility, I can, I can manifest any possibility because if I'm not the person, now that means that the game is open, right? If I'm not the person, the game is open. So now not only, now, not only do I not say and do the things that I have habitually said and done that didn't work, right? Now I not only not do that, but now I can actually cause something instead of that. I can actually cause myself to express love to the people I love instead of creating trouble. So I stop myself from creating trouble, right? But then the next step is, where, where, if, if my behavior is not going to come from there, where is it going to come from? If it's gonna, not going to come from there, it comes from nothing. Nothing is the source of creation. Nothing. Why it comes from nothing? Yeah. N nothing is another word for you. Okay. Nothing is another word for awareness. Aware awareness is nothing, isn't it? Awareness is nothing. No thing. It's not a thing, is it? Awareness is nothing. And if you're nothing, then creative behavior comes from nothing. You make it up. Instead of being the person you ended up being, right, you make up who you're going to be. You start creating yourself. You create who you're going to be. It's really that simple. You just create who you're going to be. You want to be a loving person? Good. Create that. How's, how does a loving person behave? Be that way. Are you free to be that way? Right? That's a big challenge. Are you free to be a person who is loving? Are you free to be a person who expresses unconditional love? That's a big challenge. Because according to the person, that's very threatening, isn't it? According to the person, I can't go around just loving people and being happy and caring about people and being kind. That'll make me a doormat. They'll take advantage of me. They'll hurt my feelings. They won't be considerate of me. They won't treat me the way I'm treating them. That's the person, right? That's how you learn to be. You learn to be that way because through the process of, of, of your developmental years, right? You got hurt, and every time you got hurt, you decided, I'm not going to do that again. I'm not going to let it, another person do that to me. I'm not going to open myself up. I'm not going to be loving. I'm going to be protective. I'm going to be suspicious. I'm going to make sure if I get married that I have a prenup. And that's where you're living from. You're paying attention from paranoia. What appears to be true seems real, not like an appearance. What appears to be true seems real. That's why this whole idea of who you are is awareness itself seems unreal. Because we all know what's real is what can be measured, what's scientific, what you can count, you know, what you can quantify, what you can see. That's what's real. We all know that's what's real. And we all know because that's what's real, we all know that it's true that people are a threat. It's true that you have to be careful. It's true that you have to take care of yourself. It's true that you have to have boundaries around you. It's true that you don't take big risks. It's true that you don't just openly love. And that is true from the viewpoint of being a person, right? 
Because from the viewpoint of being a person, you're limited and you're vulnerable. But from the viewpoint of being awareness itself, you're unlimited and you're not vulnerable. So nobody can hurt you. There's nothing to hurt. There's nothing to hurt. It's interesting because that the experience of there being nothing to hurt and the experience of being wide open to life and wide open to people is the experience that is fulfilling. That's what you really want. You want to experience that, being happy, right? Being awake and aware and happy and loving life and loving people, right? That's what you want, right? But at the same time, that's what you want. That's the last thing you're willing to do as a person. So you, at some point, you see, and that's the thing about meditation, at some point, you can meditate your way out of the dream. You can meditate your way out of the hypnosis. You can wake up and you can see, as the Course in Miracles says, you can wake up and you can see directly for yourself what is real cannot be threatened. This is what the Course in Miracles says. What is real cannot be threatened. What is real is awareness. That's what's real. That cannot be threatened. And what is unreal does not exist. So if you want to continue to be something that actually doesn't exist and be fearful and live a little, uh, live a small life and be limited and suffer, okay. But, but I'm here, to, I am here to tell you that there is a possibility. And see, the thing is this, when I talk about this, when I talk about this possibility, it, you, you don't have, it's not like I'm talking about, you know, uh, something that is so far-fetched. Not, it's not like I'm talking about something so far-fetched that you would, you would have to really stretch to believe what I'm talking about. That's not the case. What I'm talking about is something that when I say it, it resonates with you. You relate to it. You recognize it, don't you? Yeah, you recognize it. You recognize it, so that's the attraction to the possibilities, the recognition that you have that it's actually true. You can see if you look that it's true. You can see that the most important thing in this room, if you look, it may take a while for it to sink in, but you can see that the most important thing in this room is the space of the room. Is it not? See, that's the way the mind works. If I ask you what's the most important thing in this room, most people would never come up with the answer that it's the space. Why is it the most important thing in the room? Well, without the space, would the room be here? Nothing could be here. No, not. Got to be the most important thing. Most important thing for you in your life is the space of the awareness that you are. Without that, there is no you, there is no life. In Zen, they always, uh, they, they ask these questions to stimulate people to wake up and see the truth. And one of the things that they did in Zen is they had this ancient bowl from ancient China, from one of the, de you know, dynasties, right? Obviously very old and very beautiful. And, and they said, what's the most important thing about this bowl? And it's the same question. Space. The space, because without the space, it's not a bowl. See, this is the, uh, the this, this is the obviousness of the truth. You know, this is the obviousness of the truth that without the space that is called awareness, you have no life. Just like the space in this room, and you, the space that you are as awareness is just like the space in this room. The space in this room allows the room to be here allows everything that's in the room to be in the room. And the space in this room is not determining what's okay and what's not okay, is it? When somebody walks through the door, the space doesn't say, no, you can't come in. Where is the world, where does the world exist? In awareness. Obviously, right? Yes, in the universe. Yeah. But where does the universe exist? Within awareness. Yeah. See, can you, uh, uh, that's, that's there to be seen. It's simple, that's there to be seen. It's just like people say, well, I, you know, I, the experience that I have is that I am in this body, right? I am in this body, right? 
you learned that a long time ago and at some point you just considered it to be so and it appears to be so and so that's the end of that. There's no question to be asked, right? But if you stop and go back to what you just said, right? If everything is an awareness, right? If you become aware of your entire body right now, which you can do, can't you? Be aware of your entire body right now, right? If you're aware of your entire entire body right now, then your body must be in awareness instead of awareness being in your body. Must be. How can you be aware of your entire body unless your body is in awareness? Unless awareness is, you know, bigger than your body. It's the same thing as saying the universe is in awareness. Everything is in awareness. And then the next thing for you to, to comprehend is that that that's what you are. Not like a person. Not like a person. It's not personal. Awareness is not personal. That's one of the things that I think creates confusion for people. They, people want to exchange who they think they are as a body and as a person to become who I am as awareness. But they personify it. Do you know what I mean? Uh, the, the, the truth of who I am is awareness. The truth of who I am is awareness. Like, like, instead of a person, I'll be awareness now. No. Awareness is not personal. That's part of the freedom of awareness. It's not personal. So you can change your behavior by, by, by recognizing that you're not the one that you thought you were who was behaving the way you were behaving. You can change your behavior by coming from nothing and just inventing yourself and creating who you are and then living consistent with that creation. Living consistent with that creation. Now if you live consistent with that creation it means that you have to deal with the what plays, you have to deal with the, where your personality is operating, right? But no, that's not you. And just let it come up and let it unwind until it's completely unwound. But I'm, I'm asking you to look and see what makes it difficult because this is, what, this is how the process works, right? The process works is if you know it's possible to be free from that, right? Then you need to be inquiring and looking, as you say, the way this goes, and it does go that way for people, right? You, 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 you wake up to the possibility, right? You recognize the truth, right? You recognize the truth. But after having recognized the truth, it still plays, and when it plays, it pulls you back into forgetting all about the truth, and you're right back into identifying with yourself as a person and doing the things the person did. So what makes it difficult? What happens when that happens that has it happen and makes it so difficult for it not to happen? Look, look and see for yourself. Look and see what happens. When that happens, what happens? See, this is what I'm saying about meditation. When that happens, what happens? You know, you have, to, you have to look at it and see what is it that's going on when that happens that has me lose, that has me lose the truth, has me lose the awareness that's the truth of what, what, I, what I am. What happens? You start paying attention to the thoughts and not Okay, Jerry says you start to pay attention to the thoughts rather than awareness. Well, I say that I could pay attention to the thoughts and they don't determine me. I'm paying attention to the thoughts, but they don't determine me. Thoughts make you so uncomfortable, so edged, so nervous that you just get stuck. Now watch. The thoughts make you so uncomfortable and nervous that you just get stuck, right? The thoughts, now watch, the thoughts make who so uncomfortable? The person. Yeah, the person, right? So what's happened? You're back in the person. Okay, so, so how did that happen? You become unaware. You become unaware, you let it go. Be aware that you're uncomfortable. <coughs> It, see, but it's, you, you see that you, be aware that you're uncomfortable. You see how this, the, the person slid itself in there? Even when you spoke, the person slid in, right? You, and you were speaking from a personal view, but you didn't notice yourself doing it. You didn't notice it slide in. See, that's, that's the trick. Something happens. And when something happens, right, 
the person that you have, have it that you are, whatever it is that's happening, has a particular meaning to that person, represents a certain threat to that person, or is there something about what's happening that makes that person very interested in desiring and getting something, right? So when that happens, the habit of being a person and the habit that the person has about avoiding something or getting something, right? The habit that the person has about avoiding something or getting something kicks in. And when that kicks in, without you noticing it, right? The person shows up. Like that, the person shows up. And then you lose perspective and you're in the person view, being the person, behaving the way the person behaves. In relationship to what? Something that had a strong enough meaning, had a strong enough attraction that it could pull your attention out and back into that. And usually it's something that you perceive to be threatening or it's something that you perceive that you really want as a person, right? And so you come back into being a person to pursue that because awareness doesn't want anything. So once something stimulates you in terms of stimulates your fear or stimulates your desire, right? That, that desire and that fear is the desire and the fear of the person. So it stimulates that, right? And when it stimulates that, the attraction, the attachment and the attraction of the person to what's happening is strong, right? And so because it's strong, it, you get sucked back into the person because awareness is not afraid and awareness doesn't want anything. So what comes up is, if, so what arises, what arises is, is, is not only fear or desire, but the attachment that the fear and desire has to what it wants to get or what it's afraid of, yes? And when that happens, the impulse is strong and you don't see the, you don't see the hijack, you don't see the switch, now you're in a person. But you see, if you meditate, you can practice staying aware and paying attention so you see it happen. And when you see it happen, it didn't happen. Because when you see it happen, you're seeing it from awareness. So just as easy as you can flip into experiencing yourself the person, you can flip right back out by seeing what just happened. But only if you catch it. If you don't catch it, then you start operating as the person and then you're in that world. Then you're in the person world. And everything starts to occur in the person world. And one of the things that will happen in the person world is the person will say, oh, this is very difficult. That's the person. What's difficult for awareness? Nothing. Nothing. Well, right away, that, that's a, so, so that's a signal that you're in person, right? For, for a person, things are difficult. Can we look at ourselves as like in a, in a play and we're playing a role that was, conscript, that was set for us? Like we didn't have any choice. This is the role you're going to play. And this is the personality that you're going to have to play that role. And you have no, nothing to do or nothing to say about it. It's just what is happening. And is that a way to um, not take maybe the voices that you hear so seriously? It's, it's just, it's in the role that you play. It's a way not to just take the voices that play so seriously, it's not to take them serious at all. It's not a question of so serious, it's a question of not taking them seriously at all. And see, you just alluded to what's called non-duality. Because that's the next step, you see. When you get that you're not who you thought you were, and, you're, and you get, right? And, and see, these are things I can say to you, and you can recognize what I'm talking about, but it doesn't, it doesn't replace the need for you to see it for yourself. That has to happen. You can understand what I'm saying conceptually, but it doesn't replace the need for you to see it for yourself. That has to happen because you're not in the world that I'm talking about until you are. Do you understand? So this whole business of 
discovering the truth, which is that there is now. Now, from, an, from if you want to take it to the next step in terms of I'm not who I thought I was. I am awareness itself. And then the next thing after that that I said is that well, but awareness is not a self. Awareness is not a self. It's not personal, right? There is. So the next step is to get. There's no self. There is no self. It's not that you're not going to be a person, now you're going to be awareness. You see, there's a still a self when you say that. But awareness is not personal. There is no self. There is no self. There is no person, and that there's a person, and then there's, there's what I am, and there's what I'm not. There's, there's the subject and object, right? There's me in the world, right? So you, what, you're, what you discover, if you pay attention, right, is that that's not true. There is no subject and object. There is no self, right? And what she said, see, she said the truth innocently without understanding what she's actually saying. She said, all there is is what's happening. Isn't that true? Isn't it true? If there is no self, what's left? All there is is what's happening. And what's happening? What's happening is who you think you are. What's happening is the illusion that you're your body. That's all happening. And that's all that's happening is what's happening. That's non-duality. And when you see this for yourself, what you see is there's no doer, because if there's no self, there can't be a doer. There's no doer. All there is is the movie. All there is is the movie. And there's nothing you can say about it. There's nothing you can do about it. All you can do is, is be aware of what's happening. And, and, when you're being, see, and when you're being aware of what's happening, that's what's happening. Because there is no you to be aware of what's happening. It's, when you look at it and you see the truth, right, it's, it's obvious and it's as simple as can be, right, but not for the person. The person will react to it and say, oh, wait, wait, man, that's deep. That's deep. I, it's hard to understand. I mean, say that again? <laughs> because the person's in denial of all this, you see? The person's in denial of all this. The person will, just like Jay says, you know, he's, he, he, he's a very scientific guy. He's a very rational guy, right? So he argues for that reality. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Research shows that this is true. Everybody knows it's true. Everybody knows you can't trust people. Everybody knows you have to protect yourself. Come on, right? And I understand that. I have total, un I understand that. That's, that's, he's got the, he's, he's honest enough to, to say it, right? And like I said, when he said it, I said, you know, uh, I totally understand that because that appearance seems real. It seems real that you have to protect yourself from other people. But then, like I said, what's true? What's true? What's real, what is really real, cannot be threatened. And if that's true, do you have to protect yourself from anything? No. No. You discover you're big enough. See, and that's the thing. Transcendence is a misunderstood idea. I was thinking about this this morning. Transcendence is a misunderstood idea. A lot of people think, oh, I'm going to wake up and transcend it. I'm going, to trans I'm going to be above it all, right? It won't affect me anymore. That's not transcendence. That is a misunderstanding. Transcendence is transcending, identifying yourself as a person. That transcendence is not something that has you escape. It's not, has not something that has you go away. It's something that has you be able to be there and, 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 and not be threatened anymore. That's the transcendence of being there and not be threatened anymore. Not going anywhere. Going somewhere to get away from things is the person strategy. You understand? Transcendence is transcending the idea that you have of yourself as a person and being able to be here with the idea of being a person, right, and function in a way that's realistic and conscious. That's transcendence. So you could say transcendence is actually b being present, being more here. Why? Because if you're aware of what you are as awareness, you don't run. There's nothing to run from anymore. You can be here. You can feel the feelings of a human being. And it's, and, you know, you're not afraid to be afraid. Do you understand? If you transcend what you think you are, you're not afraid to be afraid. You're not afraid to be vulnerable. 
You can handle it. There's nothing to protect. You can handle it. Then you're really living life fully. You're really living life fully because you can open yourself up to your emotions. You can open yourself up to, to, to the, 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 what, who, who you turned out to be. You know that's not real, right? So you can open yourself up to that. You can let that person who was afraid feel the fear. You can let that person who has all these emotions that they stuffed early on in their life because it was too overwhelming. You can let all that stuff come up now because there's, not, there's nobody to be afraid of. There's nothing to be afraid of anymore. And when it comes up, it, that's called purification. When it comes up, it clears everything. It clears everything. And then even the person is, is, is now in a state of well-being because they're no longer operating in a dysfunctional way. Do you understand? Yes. Yeah. So this is all very, very, very possible. It, the, you know, meditation is a, is a tool that you can use that can be very powerful to make that happen because when you meditate, you're, you are stepping out of the, your identification with the person by moving attention away from thinking. You're stepping out of the identification as a person. But then you have to become familiar and get used to what it's like not to be in your head, right? which means you have to meditate over time and get familiar with the idea of being aware and you have to be familiar with the value and the power of seeing things as they are that's available to you through meditation. And that happens naturally, right? But you, you, but you, have, to, you, know, you have to do it consistently over time. And, and the product of meditation is, the, is that meditation becomes irrelevant. It's no longer necessary for you to do that. You can be awake you can, you can be awake because you're familiar with being awake, right? You can be awake just by your, your intention to be awake. And you can see things consistently as they actually are, right? Because now you, you've noticed the way they actually are, you're seeing the way they actually are, right? And so you, you, you can stay tuned in that way and you don't have to meditate anymore. Okay, so everybody should be enlightened now, right? <laughs> Yes. All right. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you.